How's everybody on YouTube doing? Hope you're doing great. Dave here. Um, it's it's a hot night or a hot morning. We um, we've come a long ways already. I, I, I was looking at that um, last year's crops. Wasn't that good? We had a terrible storm just like this year. We had a terrible storm this year and knocked out a lot of our watermelon. So we're barely surviving, so it's just thing. Anyways, we're coming up to Monday twenty seventh, two thousand twenty two. The month of June. We still got the month of July. <laughs> and, and, and the reason I'm saying this is because, uh, as you well know, and if you don't know, I would, I would probably just tell you now. But I work here at the farm, but I work at night. I work the graveyard shifts, pretty much. The whole morning, most of the afternoon and the whole morning, so I leave by 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, go back home, but I actually don't go home, I go to the gold gym and do a little bit of exercise, a little bit of swimming, and then and then I finally go home, maybe get a little bit of breakfast, and I've been trying to get rid of this stomach, believe me. Um, I know I'm fat, I know I'm out of shape, and I'm really worried about the airline seats, because in the months of... August, August the 1st, if everything goes right, if everything goes right, August the 1st, I'm supposed to board a flight from my hometown to Houston and then get a connecting flight the next day, I'm supposed to spend the night there, I probably, probably going to spend a few hours with my cousin, my cousin uh, uh, Fernando. Fernando Danda. Y'all don't know Fernando? He's on Facebook. Real nice guy. He's one of my best cousins. Because I have one, one best cousin, but he's just one of them. He's not my number one best cousin. My number one best cousin is Robert Rodriguez. He's my number one best cousin. I used to have a, I used to have a number one best cousin, but he, he was killed. So that was many years ago. I still don't forget him. Anyways, I'm gonna go spend some time with my cousin Fernando for that day, it was first of August, because he's supposed to drop me off very early in the morning, like maybe two o'clock in the morning, and at the Houston Intercontinental Bush Bush uh, Bush Bush Airport Bush. Where I'm going to board a flight, Delta Airlines flight, to Atlanta, Georgia, have a one hour day over there, and get a connecting flight to Korean Airlines. Korean Airlines, oh my gosh. Korean Airlines is going to take off from Atlanta all the way. 16 to 17 and a half hour flight. I have no idea how that plane has so much fuel in the wings that it will last 16 to 17 and a half hours up in the air. Fly all the way to South Korea. All the way to South Korea. I think I'm going to have, since it will be a morning flight, I'm going to have breakfast in the plane, lunch in the plane, dinner in the plane. Then we're gonna crash out and wake up and have breakfast in the plane and then day, uh, lunch in the plane. So by the time lunch comes around, we, we had already a crossed over four time zones, which means that um, if um, Monday, I'm sorry, if I guess the first was on a Tuesday, I would miss Tuesday. I would pretty much that Tuesday would never, 
would never appear again. No, it would be Wednesday. It would, it would never appear again because I crossed over three time zones to get to South Korea. Then, from South Korea, I got a three hour day over there, which is pretty good because I'm going to get off. Um, due to COVID 19, we can actually, because we're transit passengers, we don't need to get off in the in the town or anything, we just stay in the secure area. And there's a restaurant in South Korea, mm, it's real good. It's kind of like ramen here in the US, you know, you know that you know that 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 two dollar ramen, it, it's probably the same thing, except it's a big bowl of ramen with natural shrimp in there, and a little bit spicy. I think I remember last time I paid like maybe five or six dollars. Real good ramen. But of course they, they they call it something else over there. I don't know what it is. Um so after a three hour day over, I get another connecting flight that will take me to Cebu, the Philippines. Cebu. Eight hour flight more to Cebu the Philippines. My flight will arrive around eleven. No, 9.30 p.m. 9.30 p.m. And I was worried about, since it's kind of late at night already, what I did, what I did is just go ahead and check in with the Waterfront Airport and Casino Hotel, which is a five-star hotel. Pretty much just grab my bag and just walk, walk across the airport and, and, and I'm already at the airport and, and I'm already at the hotel. Um, I'm going to meet up with some friends over there where the, I had promised them that I would bring them chocolates, candies, American candy and stuff like that. You know, people from the Philippines love American chocolate, so yeah, I'll, I'll get them that. Um, and then that's where I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to check into my hotel. Get a quick shower. I mean, you, you gotta realize, 16 and a half, 17 hours stuck inside of a tube of an airplane. Even though they might have air conditioning, it's still gonna get hot. I'm gonna be all sweaty and stinking, and then jet lag, jet lag messing messing you up. It'll be something interesting. But you know what? That's gonna be my first vacation in three years. Three years. Since 2019, um, I was gonna I was gonna get my flight, I was gonna get my trip to, to the Philippines in 2019 when COVID was born. And they canceled my trip. It took almost a year to get a refund because they canceled everybody. They canceled the whole world. The whole world was in, was in a lockdown. Three years it took for the Philippines to finally open their borders. And of course, I got my vaccines, I got my certificate, I, I got that one booster shot that's going to allow me to breathe right through immigration. Um, three years I haven't, I haven't had a single vacation. I've been here at work. I work every single night, 365 days out of the night, uh, out of the year. Unless I'm sick. And I did get sick. I got COVID twice. And then and then I got bit by a spider and then I was, uh, it's this whole mess of things. I was I was very sick last year. I keep going to the hospital a lot. And like everybody just like everybody else, I'm stuck with medical bills and you know, you know we, we we pay them as we can and um I'm finally gonna get a vacation. I love being in the Philippines because the water, the oceans are so crystal clear. It's kind of like Cancun, except you don't have the cartel. You don't have that little problem in your mind where you're going to get stopped by some unknown people and try to frisk you for no reason and, you know, maybe even kidnap you. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't go to Mexican resorts. There's been too much violence. People disappear. A whole family, a whole, a whole American families have disappeared. No, the Philippines, have, uh, they might have their share of terrorism, but I think this last president kind of cleaned up a lot of a lot of that terrorism away. 
Um, what's that? What's that? That question called du Duarte or du du Duarte? I couldn't pronounce that thing well, but I think he, I think he did a good job. Because every time I went over there, I felt safe. I felt safe. I, you know, I would walk the malls, and the people are very friendly. People in the Philippines are very, very friendly. They have a different culture. They have a lot of family values over there. Um, very, very nice people. Beautiful people. My gosh. Um, they remind me of our Hispanic culture. Our Hispanic culture is almost close to the Philippine culture. They're, they, they see a visitor, they see a stranger, they'll welcome him. They'll know, they won't stay away from him like, hey, I don't know that guy, I'm, I'm going to walk away. They welcome him. You know? They'll come up to you and, and shake your hand. You know, I'm, I'm so and so, I live in so and so place, and you know, they're, they're interested in you. They're, they, they love our culture. They love our American culture. You know, and um, I'm, I'm sweating. Um, anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay there for a couple of weeks, three weeks, more than that. It's, it's gonna be about three weeks, pretty close to three weeks. Um, I'm gonna go do a lot of swimming, go do a lot of snorkeling. Maybe do some scuba diving, maybe, you know, uh, some helmet diving. Um, the ocean waters are beautiful over there. Um, I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't mess around. So I'm not, I'm not out there in the element of trying to do something wrong or doing something illegal. I, I, I mind my own business. I'm just an ordinary tourist. And... I'm grateful that that I have bumped into people over there that I've gotten to know better that they trust me and I trust them a lot. You know, once in a while I would bring them a gift from the United States, you know. There, there's, there's Pat there that a couple of years ago needed a, a good telephone. I, I brought her a nice telephone from here. She was very appreciative. Um, she's been with us in, in several, several trips to Coron, uh, Sargao, El Nido, Barocay, um, I felt safe. I felt safe with the friends that I was with in the Philippines because they didn't, they didn't make me feel uncomfortable. Um, you know, because you gotta, you have to understand, a one known American walking around, and, and I've seen women you know, backpackers, you know, they're out there, but they're in couples. You know, they're, they're either two friends or two guys or two girls or, or vice versa, but they're always in couples. I've never seen one by himself. So that's what makes the difference between me and the rest of the people because um, most of my friends here just want to party and when they get a nice chance to go to get a vacation, they want to go to Disneyland or, or they want to go to Cancun. They want to go where the danger is. It's like, no. And I don't blame them either. Because lo and behold, it's between 18 to 26 hour flight. I don't blame them either. They, they probably don't want to be in the airplane that much. Anyway, that's my take here for now. Um, we are slowly picking up watermelon. The ones that survived. Now, this is the second or the third phase of the watermelon plants, um, which means that we've done our first phase, and then we had that terrible storm that got rid of a lot of good watermelons. But you know that's Mother Nature to you. And then we had the second phase. The watermelons came out smaller and a little bit lighter, even though they're very, very, very sweet. Seedless and very sweet. Now we're coming to the third phase. As soon as we're done with the third phase, it's going to be the fourth phase, and then we're done. So, watermelon season should be over by by the end of July. Is what I'm thinking. Um, and then we got cotton season, but cotton season, you know, that's that's not every year. So, um, I want to thank you for listening to my video. If it got boring, I'm sorry. 
Um, I, I've been coming in a little bit late and the, the days are, are getting darker quicker. So it's very hard to show you what's going on in the field. Oh, it is hot in here. If you see that I'm perspiring, <laughs> my gosh. Y'all have a good uh, evening. Stay away from COVID. There's still COVID around. Uh, stay away from that monkey pox. I don't know, something about a monkey pox is what I heard on Facebook and on Twitter. You all stay safe out there. And God bless.